I have a solution to Michael Four Thirds from a business perspective. And if it becomes a reality, you hear from me first. Despite my presence here on YouTube and having a full-time profession in photography and filmmaking, I, like many of you, have other interests and hobbies. If you don't already know, I was once an engineer before picking up my camera full-time. And consequently, one of my interests is car, but more specifically, aesthetic automotive design and engineering. And one thing that struck me over the past decade is the co-development between car manufacturers. This type of collaboration helps to streamline the design process, lower the overall research and development costs, and produce better cars as a result. Car manufacturers can share their strength so that they can pour in all the necessary talents to make some magical things happen. From chassis, platform to uh, engine, to individual electric components. So, while this is not yet happening in the camera industry, I don't see why it can't be done, especially for Michael Four Thirds. Why? Well, Michael Forsyth has by far the biggest alliance of all common man groups in the world. The biggest two camera manufacturers are being Panasonic and OM System. I don't think any current Michael Forsyth users would disagree that despite being two separate companies, if you look at the features of any cameras from these two big boys, you will see that they share almost 90% of them. Yet both Panasonic and OM has their own killer features that are specific to their own cameras. And what I'm suggesting don't necessarily change that, but further improve it, and more importantly, lowering the cost at the same time. With the camera industry shrinks by the day, and competition becomes more fierce than ever, even giants like Canon and Nikon have to be innovative. Sony may be in the forefront in terms of text at the moment, with only Canon next to them, but I would dare to say that all other manufacturers are suffering from one way or another. And it is not healthy. I'll leave Nikon in this conversation, but look at Ricoh and Pentax. They are sleeping right now, and I'm unsure what they're actually doing apart from re-releasing limited editions. And oh yes, that goes with Leica too, but at least they're still releasing camera and lenses. And Fujifilm is actually kept afloat because of its success in the instant photography market, accounting for majority of its profits and sales number in Japan. In the Michael Forthers land, Blackmagic hasn't released a Michael Forthers camera for a few years, and Sharp, who promised a Michael Forthers 8K video camera, has come to a complete halt, though still listed in their website as a future product. And Project Alice, the first AI camera with a Michael Forthers mount, hasn't even delivered its first prototype and currently overdue from its crowdfunding platform. And one of the major hurdles that all these companies are suffering is the cost. Panasonic has been very slow in the Michael Forsyth's development, and OM system is too new to have a sense yet, but they're all active nonetheless. While these companies all seek to keep their slice of the market by doing their own things, even though they share the same mount, I think it is time to have a more radical approach to boost camera development. Like the automotive industry, a common chassis approach, hardware and software development such as artificial intelligence and IBIS can yield a more effective leap in terms of improvement. Since none of the Michael Forte Alliance members makes their own image sensor, together can increase the purchasing power and lower the cost of individual sensor inside each camera, hence improve profit margins and may even bring down the retail prices of the camera for us. Image processor, however, is always a gray area in the camera industry as they all claim ownership. And yet, I have doubt that since none of them is a semiconductor manufacturer, and it wouldn't be surprised that they're outsourcing to computer chip makers and brand it to their own. And with that in mind, a larger group can also boost negotiation power to chip manufacturers, not only to lower the costs, but also command a better position when it comes to securing the next generation technologies, crucially, quicker, so they can stay competitive when it comes to computational power. Since all digital cameras rely on these things these days. If any of the executives is listening, don't worry, 
All I just said is relating to research and development, sourcing and procurement. Either Panasonic and OM system can still put their final touches to their respective camera products, just like car manufacturers do over the past two decades. A different shell, performance tweaks, even the characteristics of the camera can be as distinct as they want. And this kind of collaboration also doesn't extend to optics designs, so they can still keep their own unique characters when it comes to image aesthetics. Just like the good old analog days, when camera manufacturers' characteristics is distinguished not by the performance of the camera bodies, but their lenses. So all I'm suggesting will not hurt camera companies, but in fact put them back to a position where they can focus on optics design and features developments while staying on top of the technologies and lower the overall cost of R&D. Of course, what I just said is very personal, and my thoughts don't represent any of the aforementioned companies. As much as I would like to joke about things like camera conspiracy, or be as sarcastic as Tone, I want to be constructive, because I don't want to see another Minota, another Yashika. What's your thought on this? Let me know in the comment section below. Remember, the world of photography cannot be dominated or dictated. We photographers want choices and a healthy selection of gear for various situations. And to that, I want every camera manufacturer to do well. Peace.